Okay, first off, disclaimer. I ain't here to start drama. I feel like a lot of people in this community are scared of making a video about another that goes directly against their point, but honestly, I think that notion probably shouldn't be a thing. Hmm. And upon writing that, I realize I just want to pretend that everyone else gets the irrational fear I have right now. Anyway, let it be known I have no ill will with this. I like your videos, Digibro, and I watch most of your content. I very rarely agree with your opinions, but I still like to hear what you have to say. On that note, for once I feel compelled enough to throw my two cents into the fountain. So yeah, I like you Digibro, I ain't here to start drama, but I freaking love to argue. So here we go. So, Digibro first talks about voice actors and whatnot, and I'll get to that in a moment, but the main point, or at least his first main point, seems to be about subtlety, and about how the show has to explain a lot of what's going on rather than letting you work things out. And I suppose this is correct. Wow, 10 seconds into trying to explain why Digibro is wrong, and I've already agreed with him. God, I am so good. Nah, bear with me a second. It is true that I honestly can't think of any moment from a raise where it would explain a plot point to you without just saying or showing it, but is that really a bad thing? Like, I get it, right? If you can have your audience work something out, it makes the whole scene a lot more engaging, your audience feels smarter, and you've possibly saved yourself some screen time from having to exposit information. But if you don't do that, what's wrong with that? It's not fancy or engaging in itself, and it might be kind of expository, but this sort of thing appears in everything from Brotherhood to Berserk. It's simply the straightforward, default way of explaining things to your audience, and I have a hard time believing that makes arrays bad or even subpar. Or maybe you're saying it's so overbearing that arrays might as well be informing you every time a character breathes. And I mean, it never hits that extent, but I suppose stuff like the letterboxing wasn't necessary to inform things in the past, but I can't really counter that outside of saying, does it really matter that we letterbox stuff to make sure everyone's on the same page? Like it takes up one eighth of the screen. That's the only real effect it has on people who already understand what's going on. And so what if everything in the scene is red when people already picked up on the symbolism or whatever? Are people really that distracted by the show trying to tell them something they already know? Is this really a big argument? Worst case scenario, they go, I get it, they're playing a game of Punt the Preteen, and then they move on. I don't know, I just really kind of need an explanation of what's being ruined by this kind of thing and why it matters. In fact, for a lot of Digibro's points, I always feel myself needing to ask, why does this matter that much? I don't know, everything feels kind of nitpicky. If the big moments, the plot twists, the developments are what get the biggest emotional reaction from the audience, then obviously they're at the heart of what makes the story good. Things like plot holes and illogical character actions obviously interfere with those core engagements and you can mark those down as major flaws. But what does this voice actor and this visual effect have to do with anything, you know? Maybe they are problems, but to point them out and ignore the actual parts that made a raise good seems to be very much missing the point. And then he asks what is any of this in service of, and talks about the themes, and I'm gonna be honest, I've never liked the concept of theming. It's so broad and vague that you can throw it in whatever you want. Anyway, you talk about how it didn't do anything with its theme, and how it didn't comment on its theme in any way, and... Uh, I don't know, all of this seems very much a case of analysing what wasn't there instead of what was. Even if theming is a thing, it's still not everything. There are a whole multitude of different ways a show can drive engagement, but to mark it down for not choosing one specific way is a bit unreasonable. And why does it need to be a social commentary anyway? When did entertainment stop being about entertaining its audience and start being about something you can talk about in an English class? So like, what was the point of Erased? Well, it wasn't the premise, because I'm 90% sure if you looked hard enough you could find some terrible anime that everyone's forgotten about that had an atypical main character and a time travel mystery that didn't have the impact that Erased did. It's not like time travel is a particularly unique premise anyway. So I have a hard time believing that Arrays drew popularity just with a time travel mystery and one somewhat unique character. It makes more sense that Arrays got people excited because it started by introducing a mild mystery storyline, set up some decently likeable characters with particular emphasis on Sachiko, and then out of nowhere you stab that character in the back. Chest? Wow, that is actually kind of hilarious. But that was what caught people off guard. That was what triggered the reaction from people. That was what hyped people. And then in the second episode, we start to do a more developmental arc about Kaio, a character who's been linked into the mystery but also really works as a standalone that drives her own investment. You make it seem like she was scientifically engineered to be this cute thing that your instincts tell you to protect, but that's a very cynical way of looking at it that makes the creator seem manipulative and sinister. Like it's some kind of trick, it's not real storytelling. I don't know, if we're gonna start messing with psychological tactics and how you can abuse them for easy storytelling, then I'd like to see the study it's based on. 
Actually, looking at this again mid-recording, this is a terrible argument I've chosen. I can't really think of a good counter-argument to this one, actually. What I can do, though, is offer an alternative as to why people liked Kaio's arc. And that is that people were interested in Kaio simply because she was likeable. I mean, replace Kaio with your typical annoying kid character, and I don't think you'd have such a good arc. Kaio simply had nice traits that would make any character more likeable. Kaio is very distinctive from the other characters. She has some depth behind the way she acts, and the biggest point to her is that she's very self-aware and mature. But I suppose that leads into one of your minor points you have about realistic child characters, and bleh. I've always hated the realism argument. There's points in every single series ever where you could point your finger and say that's not realistic. But the point is not that if it's realistic or not. All that matters is that it's logical enough. That's what poetic license is. Do cards explode in big fire explosions? No. Does it make logical sense that they would? Well, yes. On the flip side, if a car exploded into exactly 102 statically charged raccoons that melt the floor on impact, you'd have some questions. Obviously. To return to a raised, would a child be this smart at that age? Mm, no. But there's nothing inherently stopping a child from logically being that smart. And I think when it comes to fiction, that's all that matters. There's also a question of why does this matter anyway? Haruhi Suzumiya's personality doesn't make a realistic high schooler. Neither does this Sundare who breaks into your house at 3am to kill you. Lelouch from Code Geass doesn't use a voice disorder. Why do these ninjas shout the name of their attack? And why does your science use a fucking magic circle? <sighs> Real talk though. I think the main thing that rubbed people the wrong way about this video was the assumption that we were somehow watching 12 episodes because it showed promise, but we didn't actually enjoy it. And then when we got to the last episode, we all suddenly realized that we had wasted our time. In reality, people were watching it because it was good. Nobody watches through 12 episodes because of a premise. On that note, his Twitter doesn't lie. There was a bit of a backlash to the final episodes and some people were disappointed with it. So if it didn't come from it never being good, where did it come from? Well, the first point against Arrays had to be how it handled plot twists in episode 10, which I made a video on. And the other point against Erased was with its ending. Now for the most part, I like the closure with the ending of Erased, and it was at the very least decent. It ties up all the ends nicely and you get a lot of happy closure scenes and whatnot. The actual problem with the ending was with Yashiro and his whole motives and explanations and ugh. I'd be lying if I told you I knew what was going on. It was very convoluted and confusing and the whole thing just didn't make a lot of sense. Of course, that might be my slightly lower than average IQ talking. People probably think that's a joke. No, it's like legitimately a bias I take into account. But I think most people felt the same way. You can kind of tell by looking at the comments. See, a lot of the time people who leave and rate comments are very invested in the show, and you'll never see hate comments unless the show fucks up really badly. But you can kind of tell what parts weren't as well received even from the fans simply because there's no mention of it in the top comments. Of course, all the comments on the last episode talk about things like meeting with Airi and the closure with all the main characters, and there's absolutely no mention of Yashiro. You can also see a similar effect at the ending of Free, which is where I first came up with this little theory. I mean, uh, I haven't watched Free. That was dumb. Mm. Anyway, that's my two cents. Again, no hard feelings. I ain't here to start drama. I just wanted to add to the discussion, and oh god, I so desperately want to believe that this is the kind of community where I can sit down over a pot of tea, blatantly disagree with someone, and get up and still be friends. Not to say I'm friends with Digibro, I've, I've never talked to him. I mean, I've been very sort of loosely indirectly mentioned by him in one video. Or maybe it's total coincidence. That said, people link me that video on one of mine as to retort some of the things I say, and I suppose I should probably get to that. Hmm. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.